So the next thing we need to look at are parallel lines in the coordinate plane. So the first thing is when we talk about the slope of parallel lines, we need to know that parallel lines have the same slope. And the reason for that is because parallel lines never cross, so they should have the same slope. So for this first example here, we want to determine, so what is the slope of a line that is parallel to the line whose equation is 2x plus 3y equals 6. So the first thing you need to do is get this into y equals mx plus b form so that you can figure out the slope. So once you know the number in front of x, that's actually the slope. And if we want an a slope that's parallel to this equation, that means we need to figure out um, a line with the same slope. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get this in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to subtract over the 2x. So I have 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. And again, I'm trying to get it into y equals mx plus b, which is why I put the negative 2x first. And then I just have to divide everything by 3. So we get y equals negative 2 thirds x. And then divide that, you get 2. So the slope of this line is negative two-thirds. So if I want the parallel slope or the slope of a line parallel to this, I would have exactly the same thing. So it would be negative two-thirds. So then let's look at another type of example that you'll see. So the next type is whenever they give you a specific point and they give you an equation and your goal is to come up with a new equation, that's parallel to this given equation and it has to pass through some specific point. So if you look at this example, it says write the equation of a line that is parallel to this equation and it has to pass through this point. So there's a couple of things you have to do. Your end goal here is to get an equation because you're trying to write an equation. So you're trying to write an equation in y equals mx plus b form. And in order to write an equation in y equals mx plus b, you have to know the slope and you have to know the y-intercept. So our goal here is to find those two things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope. And in order to find the slope, this is where the equation part comes into play. So you're going to use this for the slope. So basically, if I have this equation 4x plus 3y equals 7, I if I want to write an equation that's parallel to this, I'm going to figure out the slope of this line and then use that slope. So I'm going to subtract 4x and I'm going to get this in y equals mx plus b form first. So divide everything by 3 so we get y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 7 over 3. And I'm going to cross out that y-intercept because that's a common mistake is that I've seen people want to use that. So we really aren't doing this process to find the y-intercept. We're doing this to figure out the slope. So the slope of my equation that I'm coming up with has to be negative 4 thirds. So now the next step is to figure out the y-intercept. So, so far I figured out the slope. Now I need to figure out the y-intercept. So the y-intercept part, if you're trying to write the equation, is going to come from this point. So we use the point for the y-intercept because our line has to be parallel to this given line, which means it has to have a slope of negative 4 thirds, but it has to pass through this point. So I need to know what y-intercept must I use so that my line passes through this point. So this is like the x value and this is the y value. And basically what you can do is you can use y equals mx plus b as an equation. And you can plug in your slope. And you can plug in your point, And you can figure out the y-intercept. So I have my y value is 2. My slope is negative 4 thirds. My x is negative 6. And I can solve this for b. So I'm going to have 2. When I multiply these out, I'm going to get 8. Subtract the 8 over. So I get negative 6 for b. So now using these things, so using this y-intercept and using this slope, I can write my equation. So now the last step here is to just write the equation. So y equals m, which is negative 4 thirds 
x plus b, which in this case is negative 6. So here's your equation. Now on a graph, you can do this as well. So let me just show you quickly on a graph. So basically on a graph, you would start it off the same way. Um, you would figure out, in this case, you would want to start at this point. So I'm going to start at negative 6, 2. So I have 2, 4, 6, up 2. So I'm going to start at this point. And what I need to do is I need to come up with my parallel slope. So we still started off, we figure out the parallel slope, which is negative 4 thirds. So my slope is negative 4 thirds, which tells me down 4, right 3. So what I need to do then is I still need to figure out the y-intercept. So I know my new line has to have a slope of negative 4 thirds, but I don't know what the y-intercept is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this point, and I'm going to start at that point and count using my slope until I cross the y-axis, which is the y-intercept. So 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. And you get your y-intercept equal to negative 6. So then you would take these two things and you would plug them in. So y equals negative 4 thirds x minus 6. So this would be my, my line right here that's parallel to this given line passing through this specific point. So now let's look at perpendicular in the coordinate plane. So perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So negative reciprocal slopes, which really means to flip and negate. So when you're looking at these examples, it's, they're very similar to the last ones. The only difference is instead of using the same slope, we're going to be flipping and negating them. So this first example, what is the slope of a line that's perpendicular? So that means flip and negate to the line whose equation is 3x plus 5y equals 4. So we started off the same way, get y by itself. So we have 5y equals negative 3x plus 4. Divide everything by 5. So we have y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 4 fifths. And if we're trying to figure out the slope, well, here's the slope of the original is negative 3 fifths. So if I wanted parallel to this, I would use negative 3 fifths. But if I want perpendicular, that means I need to flip it and negate. So negative becomes positive. And then... Another example would be, again, if I give you a line and I give you a specific point and I ask you to write the equation of a line that's perpendicular to this given line passing through a specific point. So it's going to be the same three steps because if you're trying to write an equation, you need to come up with y equals mx plus b where you're going to figure out the slope and you're going to figure out the y-intercepts. Those are the things that you need. So you're going to use the point for the y-intercept and you're going to use the equation for slope. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the slope. So you need a line that's perpendicular to this equation and it has to pass through that point. So to find the slope you're going to use the equation, solve it for y, so get y by itself, which in this case it's already done for us. Identify the slope, which is negative 3. Also you can think of this as negative 3 over 1, since it's a whole number, or since it's an integer. So then my perpendicular slope would be flip this, so 1 over 3, and negate. So here is your perpendicular slope, or the slope that you should be using. And then the next step is going to be, well, now we have to figure out the y-intercept. Because I figured out this part, I have to know the end part. So find the y-intercept, which means take your equation, y equals mx plus b, the relationship that you know between all of these points. Here's my x, here's my y. Plug in y, which is negative 1. Plug in your 
perpendicular slope, do not plug in the original, that would be for parallel, and you want to come up with a line that's perpendicular, so you have to make sure you use the perpendicular slope. So one-third, plug in this point, so x is 3, and now we're going to solve for b. So we have negative 1 equals 1 plus b, subtract 1, so we get negative 2 equals b. So now using both my perpendicular slope and y-intercept, I can write my equation using y equals mx plus b. So y equals m, which is the slope, make sure it's the perpendicular slope, x plus b, which in this case it's negative 2. So there's your equation. Now on a graph, you can do the exact same thing. Start at your point, so 3, negative 1, so 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Figure out, okay, well, if this is my slope, negative 3, perpendicular slope is going to be 1 over 3, which means up 1, right 3. So start here, go up 1, right 3, 1, 2, 3, but if you notice, I'm moving away from the y-axis, so I need to backtrack. So I need to go down 1 and then left 3. And then you get your y-intercept, which is negative 2 which using these things will allow you to write your equation. So one-third x minus two for your y-intercept. And again, this line here is the line that would be perpendicular to this given line passing through that given point.